There's always a few anime that fly under the radar, hidden gems that, despite not getting the attention, might be worthwhile to check out. And I'd say this season, that would be Fina Pirate Princess. I saw it looked and sounded great from the trailer, and the fact I love pirate media such as Black Sails and Black Flag probably helped. But above all, something in it kinda reminded me of Akatsuki no Yona. Now if you don't know what that is, Akatsuki no Yona is in essence the coming of age story of a sheltered princess whose life turns upside down as she's forced to embark on an adventure where she develops from this defenseless damsel into a badass warrior. I have no idea if this sounds good to you or not. but. It's not only one of the highest rated shoujo manga ever, but one of the highest rated of any demographic in general. So as you can assume, I came into the show with pretty high expectations, and after giving it a shot myself, I wanted to bring some attention to it. So when Fino was a little girl, a ship she was aboard was attacked, but thanks to a boy named Yukimaru, she managed to escape. After being adrift, she ended up on the island of Shangri-La, which was essentially a red light district, but she didn't want to end up living her life as a court zen, but had no real way of escaping. However, on what was gonna be her first night on the job, with the help of people from her past, she manages to sail away into an island of samurai, or as they're called here, goblin knights. They're from a clan who was saved in the past by her family and sends vowed to protect them. She meets the clan leader and he gives her a crystal that looks like a thick ass phone screen, which was something her father wanted to protect and has to do with the mission she must accomplish of finding Eden. So the next day she goes around and meets the crew. There's Karen, best girl, and the mechanic of the group, you have Shitan, Archer Playboy, you have the group mom, Monkey 1 and Monkey 2, and Batman. Sundari Batman. Am I forgetting someone? Oh yeah, Makaba, but the show forgets him too. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. So since I've talked about everyone else, it might be the best time to talk about Fina. She's caring, a beat, and really annoying sometimes. Definitely not a standout protagonist on her own, but she bounces off really well off the rest of the cast. Anyways, after they get introduced to one another, Fina finds out about the cheat code for character development and she cuts her hair, then embarks with the samurai in a submarine as they search for Eden. And think about this for a bit, isn't this just like Curse of the Black Pearl? She's a kid found adrift, there's a whole gimmick around the family heirloom, and she has to go on an adventure with someone with connections to her father to figure out more about her family and how that might define her place in the world. Think, Mark. On another note, this show's biggest strength has to be the character interactions. The whole cast is pretty fun to see on screen, and some moments really caught me off guard, like when the dumb twins decided to preach about the religion of truth. Why you? Women with a perfect boob to hip ratio are a gift to humanity. I cannot kill you. What? And on the other side of the cast, the antagonists are really solid. You got, um... What was I talking about again? Oh, you got Captain Grace and her pirate crew, Lord Fucktard, and this guy, Lord Abel, who is just a walking red flag. Also, I really love how even the minor antagonists, such as the Rumble Rose crew, get to have their own little interaction, which just makes them feel less like side characters. They went to the left! Good, thank you, Mary. Everyone, we go right! Come on, follow me! In general, the characters are the best part of this show, and that's saying something when the production value is as good as it is here. I bet this is where all of the Haikyuu season 4 budget went. Visually, this show is amazing. Character art, backgrounds, the animation, direction. Top to bottom, I'd say it's the best looking show airing right now. And the soundtrack is as good as you'd expect from Yuki Kajura. And if you don't know who that is, she's behind the music of the Fate series, Demon Slayer, SAO, Madoka Magica, you get the point. Now you are probably tired of seeing me gushing about this show, because I'm trying to get you to watch it, but either way, let's address some negatives. The tone can sometimes be a bit iffy. There's that typical shoujo manga tonal shift where things can go from drama to comedy really fast. It also constantly uses a trope that I don't like, and it's that whenever Fina is in danger and calls for Yukimaru, he always gets there just in time. And something that really gets to me is how they try and implement a bunch of historical figures and events into the narrative, but it comes off a bit tacked on. I get you're going for alternate history kind of deal, but this is a bit over the top. 
and this is only made worse by the fact this show can sometimes be quite fast paced, so a few of the info dumps do come off as a break in the narrative. So overall, Fina Pirate Princess is a solid character driven adventure story, whose main strengths lie in interactions among the cast, along with the great production value. Is it living up to my expectations for it? I'd say it's very good, but it's hard to try and compare it fairly to Akatsuki no Yona at this point, when one is a manga that's been running for over a decade and the other is a halfway complete 12 episode anime. I do wish it was longer, but as long as it keeps trending in the right direction with the next few episodes, I'd say they have enough time to give it some good closure. And there is a certain value to these shorter stories that is hard to find in longer ones. So while it might seem a bit short for an adventure series, I'd still say you should give Fina Pirate Princess a shot. Without further ado, I'm Ivo, signing out.